Welcome to Living with Reality, a podcast featuring archive teachings and modern conversations with Dr. Robert Svoboda, brought to you by the Be Here Now Network. Living with Reality explores Ayurveda and other wisdom traditions of India, which Dr. Svoboda has been studying for nearly 50 years. For more information, please visit BeHereNowNetwork.com slash Dr. Svoboda. That's D-R-S-V-O-B-O-D-A. Hello and welcome to Living with Reality. I'm Paula Crossfield, your host and Dr. Svoboda's media manager. I'm really looking forward to sharing this episode of the podcast with you. In it, Dr. Svoboda talks about the three does. I will let him tell the story. Um, but it is all about developing compassion and steadiness in ourselves and donating our efforts forward. So I hope you enjoy it. Before we jump right in, I want to let you know that this is the last month to join the Satsanga subscription. This is a monthly subscription or an annual subscription where you can join Dr. Sabota live every month for a lecture on a specific topic and a Q&A. If you'd like to learn more, you can go to Dr. Svoboda, that's S-V-O-B-O-D-A dot teachable dot com, and you can locate the Satsanga subscription and find out all about the upcoming courses that are going to be taught this year. It's really fun, it's affordable, and we hope you'll join us. So here is the podcast. Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha. Om Vakratunda Mahakaya. Surakoti Samaprabha Nirvignam Kurame Deva Sarvakar Yeshu Saravadam Om Namaste. Today's subject is the three does. The is the voiced dental, unaspirated consonant in the Sanskrit alphabet. And this particular story is based on an account from the Brahadaranyaka Upanishad. In this particular account, Prajapati and Prajapati was the creator in the Vedic pantheon. The Vedic pantheon, the classical pantheon, are somewhat different. In the classical world, Brahma is the creator. But back in the time of the Vedas, Prajapati was the creator. And Prajapati sacrificed himself so that the universe could be created. That's how he did the creation. Prajapati created humans, devatas, meaning celestial gods and goddesses, and asuras. Asuras are also celestial beings. They are rather more focused on self-aggrandizement than are the the devatas. These three classes of beings are, however, symbolic of the three principles, the three mahagunas, the three great qualities that all living beings possess, and in particular, all humans possess. The devas represent sattva, Sattva is sometimes translated as equilibrium. Literally, sattva means truth or reality. Tva means the the quality of. So, sattva is the ability to perceive things accurately and act uh, as is appropriate in any particular situation. Sattva is a 
desirable quality, the most desirable quality to have, in fact, because we as individuals always need to be adapting to our environments, especially in the world of today. The humans are represented by the quality rajas. Rajas means activity. Humans are always active. They have to be looking for food. They have to be avoiding predators. They have to be collaborating with one another. The lot of the human is to be active all day long. So, the quality of rajas and the quality of being human are very similar to one another. The quality of tamas, or being fixed in a particular activity, fixed in a particular attitude, this is characteristic of the asura. Sometimes people translate asura as demon, but back in the days of the Veda, they were not demons. They were a different ethereal or astral race and they were a different attitude that manifested within the human. So when Prajapati was teaching these three classes of beings that he himself had created, he was actually teaching humans to behave in a particular way when they were able to identify that a particular quality or attribute was working within them. And this requires a certain amount of self-awareness. So the implication is that one should always be aware at any one moment of what tendency is working. The tendency to sattva, to having a sense of harmony and equilibrium and being able to manage things well, a sense of rajas, which is manifests as a, a drive to act, to make changes, to alter one's situation, and a tendency to tamas, meaning a tendency to remain stable, to remain in the position one is in, sometimes even when the change is required. And after Prajapati had taught the devas, the humans, and the asuras, he wanted to test them. And so he said to them, duh. He spoke just this one syllable. And then he asked each one of them if they had understood. And the devas said, yes, we have understood. What we, and Prajapati said to them, what have you understood? And they said, what we have understood is that you are teaching us Dhamma. Dhamma means self-control. Dhamma means being able to restrain oneself from indulgence because the devas have a tendency to be very self-indulgent. They create a situation where things are in equilibrium, things are in harmony, and then they feel as if they need not pay attention to whether change is required or not. So they said, Dhamma is what you have requested us to do. You have requested us to be self-controlled, not to be indulgent. And Prajapati said, yes, you have understood. Then Prajapati said to the humans, have you understood? And the humans said, yes, we have understood. And Prajapati said, what have you understood? And the humans said, you have told us dana. Dana means donation. Dana means to be generous in giving. Because humans tend to be greedy, to be acquisitive, because we are always looking for the things that we require it to remain alive, the things we require in life. 
And when we gain those things, we tend to want to hold on to them and not be generous and not share with others. So the humans had understood that, yes, what our maker, our creator, our father, Prajapati, is telling us is that we must be generous. What comes to us because of our activity, our rajas, we must share with others as well. And Prajapati said, yes, you have understood. And then Prajapati went to the asuras. And he said to the asuras, have you understood? And the asuras said, yes, we have understood. And Prajapati said, what have you understood? And the asuras replied, we have understood that you have taught us daya. Daya means compassion. Because when someone is very fixed in an opinion and very fixed in an attitude, and they encounter someone who is not willing to cooperate with them, often the tendency is to insist that that person cooperate, to force them in a way that may be cruel. So Prajapati was telling the asuras, do not be cruel. Maintain your attitudes if you like, but be compassionate to others who may not have the same attitudes. And Prajapati was then satisfied because each of the classes of beings that he had taught had understood what was the appropriate lesson for them. And this, of course, is a lesson that all of us should remember as we move through the world of today. We should maintain self-control. We should maintain compassion. We should maintain generosity. When I first entered the Ayurvedic College in Pune, we were taught Sanskrit, excerpts from the Sanskrit classics, some Sanskrit grammar, and a number of what are called Subhashitas. Subhashita means a good saying, literally. A proverb. And one of the proverbs goes this way Parupakaraya Sada Vibhutiyaha. The word Vibhuti often means a supernatural capability, it can mean a blessing uh, that possesses some unusual power or capability, capacity. But vibhuti can also mean a person who has those qualities, those unusual, not standard qualities, someone who is a superior human being, someone who has really gained valuable awareness and valuable capabilities as a human. Vibhutiyaha is plural. So the great, great people, Vibhutiyaha, Sada, Sada means always. Paropakaraya. Para means others. Upakara means assistance, obligation, attentiveness towards assisting. So paropakaraya sada vibhutiyaha means great people are great, not because they are well-known, not because they are rich, not because they are powerful. They're really, truly great people are great because at all times, sada, at all times, they are concerned with the welfare of others, other humans, other beings of the planet itself. They are not concerned with their own welfare. They do whatever they need to do to maintain themselves so that they can achieve whatever their dharma has called upon them to achieve. But otherwise, after they have invested as much energy as they need to do to maintain their own personal dharma, 
thereafter, what they do is they actively invest their energy, their time, their resources in assisting others, in para upakara. So, and they do it in these three ways. In the case of the attitudes that are generally full of sattva, those great people restrain themselves when in fact they could display to others how clever they are, how great they are. Instead of that, they restrain that indulgence in self-congratulation. They maintain an attitude of humility, an attitude of willingness to cooperate with others with the understanding that Vasudeva Kutumbam, the entire world is the family of the Supreme Being. So rather than become arrogant, rather than become complacent, rather than sleep on their laurels, great people are self-controlled. When, as happens to everyone, Thomas may take over for them at some point, they remember the words of Prajapati, and instead of pushing forward brutally and, and getting their way, whatever that might be, instead, they are compassionate. They remember that all living beings deserve and flourish in an, in an environment that is characterized by compassion. And they display compassion to themselves, to other beings, to the earth itself. They project compassion in all directions because compassion is what is appropriate when one has achieved a position and is established in that position. But most important, they focus on dana. And we are, after all, human beings. And therefore, as humans, the thing we should most focus on is donation, is to take our money, our assets, our time, our energy, our attention, and donate it to those who need it. Offer it to those who can benefit by it. Supply it to those who are not as fortunate as we are. Taking advantage of our own achievements or our own benefits or of what we have accumulated, we should be accumulating that for the purpose of then sharing it with others. This is the meaning of the da that is most appropriate for human beings. And this is a true test of whether someone is truly great or not. Many people in this world have achieved what is popularly assumed to be greatness. Perhaps they are politically great or even more likely in this world in which everything is for sale, they have become rich and riches and greatness have become associated with one another in the minds of the vast majority of modern people. But a person should be respected not for how much they have accumulated, but for how much they give away once they have accumulated it. It is, especially nowadays, no great thing to accumulate money. There is lots of money wandering around. All you have to do is pick it up. Accumulating money is very easy nowadays, but being willing to accumulate and then let go of it again this is something that truly does show greatness. And what is most important with 
this attitude of generosity, of donation, is that the money go to the money and the investment of time and attention should go to worthy causes instead of simply taking the money and giving it to whatever seems to be going to provide you with the greatest good media exposure or what will provide you with the greatest tax benefits or what will provide you with the greatest amount of suggestive influence on someone you were trying to influence. In this regard, I would like to share one more Sanskrit shloka with you, another one that I learned early on in the Ayurveda college. A mantram aksharam nasti, nasti mulam anaushadam, a yogyaha purusho nasti, yojikas tatra durlabaha. So, what this says is, there is no syllable, the implication is no syllable in any language, but in particular in Sanskrit. There is no syllable that is not a mantra. That means every syllable that you speak is having the effect of a mantra. It will have a greater or lesser effect depending on your awareness of how it should be spoken, the context in which it should be spoken, and why it should be spoken. But any syllable can be employed as a mantra if you know how to use it. The second line says, there is no root that cannot be used as a medicine. It has been said about the personal physician of Lord Gautama Buddha that when he, his name was Jivaka, when he was studying Ayurveda at the University of Nalanda, that he was, or perhaps it was Takshashila, but it was at a great university back at that time, he and his fellow classmates were given the task of going out into the forest and finding a plant that had no medicinal uses. The students all went out into the forest. They looked around. They tried to find plants. They all came back. Each one came at least with one plant except Jivaka. And Jivaka was interrogated by his teachers and and asked why he did not bring back any plant. And Jivaka said, there are no plants that have no medicinal value. And the teachers thought, ha, he's just saying that so he will get a good grade. So then they dragged him back into the forest and he promptly showed them each plant that they came across and gave a meaningful and relatively erudite, he was still a student after all, explanation for how that plant could be used. And then the teachers had to say, yes, you're the student who has really passed the exam because you have understood the qualities of all these plants. And that's what that line means. There is no root, and root is used as a an example of a part representing the whole. There is no plant that cannot be used as a medicine. And for that matter, no animal, no vegetable. There is no substance in the world, no action in the world that cannot be used as a medicine. Everything has a potential medicinal value, or it has potential value as a poison if it is misused. So those are the first two lines, the mantra and the aushada, the medicine. The third line is, there is no human being who is useless, who is completely good for nothing. Uh, there is, every human being has some capability, has something that he or she can do that can benefit other human beings, the planet in general, animals, plants, minerals, 
there is something that everyone can do according to his or her own personal dharma that can bring some benefit, however minor, to the world itself. How that person might be able to employ that is something that hopefully they will understand themselves, and if not, then that's what someone else should be assisting them to understand. Someone who is willing to give of his or her time and attention to assist that person to move in a good direction. So every syllable can be used as a mantra. Every plant can be used as a medicine. Every human can be put to good use. The final line is the clencher in this context. Yojakas tetra durlabaha. So a yojaka means a person who knows how to make use of these things, who knows the yoga. In this case, yoga means to actually and literally yoke. If you have ever seen a pair of oxen plowing a field, possibly in India or in some or some other country, then you will know exactly what a yoke is. It is a contraption that fits over the necks of these two animals and connects them to whatever it is that they are pulling. So when we talk about yoga, what we're really talking about is yoking ourselves first to prana, having the prana pull us in the direction that we should go, yoking ourselves to those activities that we should be doing in order to move forward in our lives and at the same time be benefiting others. And so in this case, a yojaka is someone who knows how to yoke. If you are trying to plow a field, you need to have someone who knows how to yoke the oxen to the plow, otherwise the plow is not going to get you very far in the field. So you need a yojaka when you're trying to apply a group of syllables and turn it into a mantra. You need a yojaka when you are attempting to discover the qualities of a substance and making it make it into a medicine. And you definitely need a yojaka, someone who knows how to yoke, when you're trying to take a human being who up until this point has been a yogya, has been not properly yoked, has not found what he or she can best be doing. And if you were to take such a person and then assist them to discover what they should best be doing. The only challenge here is that yojakas tatra durlabaha. Finding such a yojaka, finding such a person, such a person is not so easy because such a person is durlabaha. Durlabaha means difficult to obtain, difficult to locate. So the challenge in life is not that all of these things are lying around and we can't use them. The challenge is finding out how to use them. And the beginning of understanding how to use them is to, to be aware of the fact that at all times, we ourselves, even if we are limited in our abilities, to understand, our abilities to use, our abilities to implement, that we as human beings need to maintain self-control, we need to maintain compassion, and above all, we need to be willing to, to donate, to give away of our time and our energy and our attention and our accumulated possessions, because all of these things are not, they have not been given to us to hold on to forever. We are not permanent. They have been given us to steward, to manage until we have to pass them off to someone else. 
and it is our task to manage them in an appropriate and a an a, a rewarding way, a way that is going to be rewarding for us as individuals and for those with whom we come into contact. There are two words in Sanskrit that are very closely related to one another. They are opposites, but they sound very similar. The first word is krita and the second word is krita dna. They sound almost the same. Neither one is particularly easy to pronounce. Krita dnya, krita means performed, dnya means knows, and that too, not just sort of knows theoretically, but knows deep in oneself. And that means gratitude. When someone does something for you and you acknowledge it, not just superficially, but you acknowledge it all the way down to your inner being, then you have really achieved appropriate and genuine gratitude. Krita gna instead means that word gna, hana, hana, hanti gna, means to kill. So someone who is has no gratitude, what they have done is they have taken a valuable karma, a valuable action that has been performed in their direction, and instead, instead of sending the energy back in the direction of the person who has offered it to them, instead of responding in a positive way, instead, they have destroyed that connection, they have killed that, that generosity by being ungrateful, by being unwilling to respond in kind. Yet another reason why generosity is the most important characteristic that the Creator wants human beings to understand. God willing, all of us will be able to remember this, this lesson that the Creator has offered to the humans and the Asuras, and the Devas, and good things will happen with greater frequency as we move forward in these most peculiar times in which we are living. Lokas samastas sukhino bhavantu